Title 8, Crimes Against Persons Chapter 1, Destruction of Life Section 1, Parasite, Murder, Homicide Article 246 Parasite, any person who shall kill his father, mother, or child, whether legitimate or illegitimate, or any of his ascendants, or descendants, or his spouse, shall be guilty of parasite and shall be punished by the penalty of reclusion perpetua to death. Article 247 Death or physical injuries inflicted under exceptional circumstances, any legally married person who having surprised his spouse in the act of committing sexual intercourse with another person, shall kill any of them or both of them in the act or immediately thereafter, or shall inflict upon them any serious physical injury, shall suffer the penalty of destiero. If he shall inflict upon them physical injuries of any other kind, he shall be exempt from punishment. These rules shall be applicable, under the same circumstances, to parents with respect to their daughters under 18 years of age, and their seducer, while the daughters are living with their parents. Any person who shall promote or facilitate the prostitution of his wife or daughter, or shall otherwise have consented to the infidelity of the other spouse shall not be entitled to the benefits of this article. Article 248 Murder, any person who, not falling within the provisions of Article 246 shall kill another, shall be guilty of murder and shall be punished by reclusion temporal in its maximum period to death if committed with any of the following attendant circumstances. 1. With treachery, taking advantage of superior strength, with the aid of armed men, or employing means to weaken the defense or of means or persons to ensure or afford impunity. 2. In consideration of a price, reward, or promise. 3. By means of inundation, fire, poison, explosion, shipwreck, Stranding of a vessel, derailment, or assault upon a streetcar or locomotive, fall of an airship, by means of motor vehicles, or with the use of any other means involving great waste and ruin. 4. On occasion of any of the calamities enumerated in the preceding paragraph, or of an earthquake, eruption of a volcano, destructive cyclone, epidemic or other public calamity. 5. With evident premeditation. 6. With cruelty, by deliberately and inhumanly augmenting the suffering of the victim, or outraging or scoffing at his person or corpse. Article 249. Homicide, any person who, not falling within the provisions of Article 246, shall kill another without the attendance of any of the circumstances enumerated in the next preceding article, shall be deemed guilty of homicide and be punished by reclusion temporal. Article 250. Penalty for frustrated parasite, murder, or homicide, the courts, in view of the facts of the case, may impose upon the person guilty of the frustrated crime of parasite, murder, or homicide, defined and penalized in the preceding articles, a penalty lower by one degree than that which should be imposed under the provision of Article 50. The courts, considering the facts of the case, may likewise reduce by one degree the penalty which under Article 51 should be imposed for an attempt to commit any of such crimes. Article 251 Death caused in a tumultuous affray, when, while several persons, not composing groups organized for the common purpose of assaulting and attacking each other reciprocally, quarrel and assault each other in a confused and tumultuous manner, and in the course of the affray someone is killed and it cannot be ascertained who actually killed the deceased, but the person or persons who inflicted serious physical injuries can be identified, such person or persons shall be punished by prison mayor. If it cannot be determined who inflicted the serious physical injuries on the deceased, the penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods shall be imposed upon all those who shall have used violence upon the person of the victim. Article 252 Physical injuries inflicted in a tumultuous affray, when in a tumultuous affray as referred to in the preceding article, only serious physical injuries are inflicted upon the participants thereof and the person responsible thereof cannot be identified, all those who appear to have used violence upon the person of the offended party shall suffer the penalty next lower in degree than that provided for the physical injuries so inflicted. When the physical injuries inflicted are of a less serious nature and the person responsible therefore cannot be identified, 
all those who appear to have used any violence upon the person of the offended party shall be punished by arresto mayor from 5 to 15 days. Article 253 Giving assistance to suicide, any person who shall assist another to commit suicide shall suffer the penalty of prison mayor, if such person leads his assistance to another to the extent of doing the killing himself, he shall suffer the penalty of reclusion temporal. However, if the suicide is not consummated, the penalty of arresto mayor in its medium and maximum periods, shall be imposed. Article 254 Discharge of Firearms Any person who shall shoot at another with any firearm shall suffer the penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods, unless the facts of the case are such that the act can be held to constitute frustrated or attempted parasite, murder, homicide, or any other crime for which a higher penalty is prescribed by any of the articles of this code. Section 2, Infanticide and Abortion Article 255 Infanticide, the penalty provided for parasite in Article 246 and for murder in Article 248 shall be imposed upon any person who shall kill any child less than three days of age. If the crime penalized in this article be committed by the mother of the child for the purpose of concealing her dishonor, she shall suffer the penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods, and if said crime be committed for the same purpose by the maternal grandparents or either of them, the penalty shall be prison mayor. Article 256 Intentional Abortion Any person who shall intentionally cause an abortion shall suffer. 1. The penalty of reclusion temporal, if he shall use any violence upon the person of the pregnant woman. Two. The penalty of prison mayor if, without using violence, he shall act without the consent of the woman. 3. The penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods, if the woman shall have consented. Article 257. Unintentional abortion, the penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium period shall be imposed upon any person who shall cause an abortion by violence, but unintentionally. Article 258. Abortion practiced by the woman herself of by her parents, the penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods shall be imposed upon a woman who shall practice abortion upon herself or shall consent that any other person should do so. Any woman who shall commit this offense to conceal her dishonor, shall suffer the penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods. If this crime be committed by the parents of the pregnant woman or either of them, and they act with the consent of said woman for the purpose of concealing her dishonor, the offenders shall suffer the penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods. Article 259 Abortion practiced by a physician or midwife and dispensing of abortives, the penalties provided in Article 256 shall be imposed in its maximum period, respectively, upon any physician or midwife who, taking advantage of their scientific knowledge or skill, shall cause an abortion or assist in causing the same. Any pharmacist who, without the proper prescription from a physician, shall dispense any abortive shall suffer arresto mayor and a fine not exceeding 1,000 pesos. Section 3, Dual Article 260 Responsibility of participants in a duel, the penalty of reclusion temporal shall be imposed upon any person who shall kill his adversary in a duel. If he shall inflict upon the latter physical injuries only, he shall suffer the penalty provided therefore, according to their nature. In any other case, the combatants shall suffer the penalty of arresto mayor, although no physical injuries have been inflicted. The seconds shall in all events be punished as accomplices. Article 261 Challenging to a duel the penalty of prison correctional in its minimum period shall be imposed upon any person who shall challenge another, or incite another to give or accept a challenge to a duel, or shall scoff at or decry another publicly for having refused to accept a challenge to fight a duel. Chapter 2, Physical Injuries Article 262 Mutilation the penalty of reclusion temporal to reclusion perpetua shall be imposed upon any person who shall intentionally mutilate another by depriving him, either totally or partially, or some essential organ of reproduction. Any other intentional mutilation shall be punished by prison mayor in its medium and maximum periods. 
Article 263. Serious physical injuries, any person who shall wound, beat, or assault another, shall be guilty of the crime of serious physical injuries and shall suffer. 1. The penalty of prison mayor, if in consequence of the physical injuries inflicted, the injured person shall become insane, imbecile, impotent, or blind. 2. The penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods, if in consequence of the physical injuries inflicted, the person injured shall have lost the use of speech or the power to hear or to smell, or shall have lost an eye, a hand, a foot, an arm, or a leg or shall have lost the use of any such member, or shall have become incapacitated for the work in which he was therefore habitually engaged. 3. The penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods, if in consequence of the physical injuries inflicted, the person injured shall have become deformed, or shall have lost any other part of his body, or shall have lost the use thereof, or shall have been ill or incapacitated for the performance of the work in which he is habitually engaged for a period of more than 90 days. 4. The penalty of arresto mayor in its maximum period to prison correctional in its minimum period, if the physical injuries inflicted shall have caused the illness or incapacity for labor of the injured person for more than 30 days. If the offense shall have been committed against any of the persons enumerated in Article 246, or with attendance of any of the circumstances mentioned in Article 248, the case covered by Subdivision No. 1 of this article shall be punished by reclusion temporal in its medium and maximum periods, the case covered by Subdivision No. 2 by prison correctional in its maximum period to prison mayor in its minimum period, the case covered by Subdivision No. 3 by prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods, and the case covered by Subdivision No. 4 by prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods. The provisions of the preceding paragraph shall not be applicable to a parent who shall inflict physical injuries upon his child by excessive chastisement. Article 264. Administering injurious substances or beverages, the penalties established by the next preceding article shall be applicable in the respective case to any person who, without intent to kill, shall inflict upon another any serious, physical injury by knowingly administering to him any injurious substance or beverages or by taking advantage of his weakness of mind or credulity. Article 265. Less serious physical injuries, any person who shall inflict upon another physical injuries not described in the preceding articles, but which shall incapacitate the offended party for labor for ten days or more, or shall require medical assistance for the same period shall be guilty of less serious physical injuries and shall suffer the penalty of arrest o mayor. Whenever less serious physical injuries shall have been inflicted with the manifest intent to kill or offend the injured person, or under circumstances adding ignominy to the offense in addition to the penalty of arrest o mayor, a fine not exceeding 500 pesos shall be imposed. Any less serious physical injuries inflicted upon the offender's parents, ascendants, guardians, curators, teachers, or persons of rank, or persons in authority, shall be punished by prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods, provided that, in the case of persons in authority, the deed does not constitute the crime of assault upon such person. Article 266. Slight physical injuries and maltreatment, the crime of slight physical injuries shall be punished. 1. By arrest o manner when the offender has inflicted physical injuries which shall incapacitate the offended party for labor from 1 to 9 days, or shall require medical attendance during the same period. 2. By arrest o manner or a fine not exceeding 20 pesos and censure when the offender has caused physical injuries which do not prevent the offended party from engaging in his habitual work nor require medical assistance. 3. By arrest o manner in its minimum period or a fine not exceeding 50 pesos when the offender shall ill-treat another by deed without causing any injury. Title 9, Crimes Against Personal Liberty and Security. Chapter 1, Crimes Against Liberty. Section 1, Illegal Detention. Article 267. Kidnapping and Serious Illegal Detention, Any Private Individual Who Shall Kidnap or Detain Another or in any other manner deprive him of his liberty, shall suffer the penalty of reclusion perpetua to death. 1. 
if the kidnapping or detention shall have lasted more than five days. 2. If it shall have been committed simulating public authority. 3. If any serious physical injuries shall have been inflicted upon the person kidnapped or detained, or if threats to kill him shall have been made. 4. If the person kidnapped or detained shall be a minor, female, or a public officer. The penalty shall be death where the kidnapping or detention was committed for the purpose of extorting ransom from the victim or any other person, even if none of the circumstances above mentioned were present in the commission of the offense. Article 268. Slight illegal detention, the penalty of reclusion temporal shall be imposed upon any private individual who shall commit the crimes described in the next preceding article without the attendance of any of circumstances enumerated therein. The same penalty shall be incurred by anyone who shall furnish the place for the perpetration of the crime. If the offender shall voluntarily release the person so kidnapped or detained within three days from the commencement of the detention, without having attained the purpose intended, and before the institution of criminal proceedings against him, the penalty shall be prison mayor in its minimum and medium periods and a fine not exceeding 700 pesos. Article 269 Unlawful arrest, the penalty of arrest o mayor and a fine not exceeding 500 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, in any case other than those authorized by law, or without reasonable ground therefore, shall arrest or detain another for the purpose of delivering him to the proper authorities. Section 2, Kidnapping of Minors Article 270 Kidnapping and Failure to Return a Minor the penalty of reclusion perpetua shall be imposed upon any person who, being entrusted with the custody of a minor person, shall deliberately fail to restore the latter to his parents or guardians. Article 271. Inducing a minor to abandon his home, the penalty of prison correctional and a fine not exceeding 700 pesos shall be imposed upon anyone who shall induce a minor to abandon the home of his parent or guardians or the persons entrusted with his custody. If the person committing any of the crimes covered by the two preceding articles shall be the father or the mother of the minor, the penalty shall be arrest o mayor or a fine not exceeding 300 pesos, or both. Section 3, Slavery and Servitude Article 272 Slavery, the penalty of prison mayor and a fine of not exceeding 10,000 pesos shall be imposed upon anyone who shall purchase, sell, kidnap, or detain a human being for the purpose of enslaving him. If the crime be committed for the purpose of assigning the offended party to some immoral traffic, the penalty shall be imposed in its maximum period. Article 273 Exploitation of Child Labor the penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods and a fine not exceeding 500 pesos shall be imposed upon anyone who, under the pretext of reimbursing himself of a debt incurred by an ascendant, guardian or person entrusted with the custody of a minor, shall, against the latter's will, retain him in his service. Article 274 Services rendered under compulsion in payment of debt the penalty of arrest o mayor in its maximum period to prison correctional in its minimum period shall be imposed upon any person who, in order to require or enforce the payment of a debt, shall compel the debtor to work for him, against his will, as household servant or farm laborer. Chapter 2, Crimes Against Security Section 1, Abandonment of Helpless Persons and Exploitation of Minors Article 275 Abandonment of person in danger and abandonment of one's own victim, the penalty of arrest o mayor shall be imposed upon. 1. Anyone who shall fail to render assistance to any person whom he shall find in an uninhabited place wounded or in danger of dying, when he can render such assistance without detriment to himself, unless such omission shall constitute a more serious offense. 2. Anyone who shall fail to help or render assistance to another whom he has accidentally wounded or injured. 3. Anyone who, having found an abandoned child under seven years of age, shall fail to deliver said child to the authorities or to his family, or shall fail to take him to a safe place. Article 276. Abandoning a minor, the penalty of arrest o mayor and a fine not exceeding. 
Five hundred pesos shall be imposed upon anyone who shall abandon a child under seven years of age, the custody of which is incumbent upon him. When the death of the minor shall result from such abandonment, the culprit shall be punished by prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods, but if the life of the minor shall have been in danger only, the penalty shall be prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods. The provisions contained in the two preceding paragraphs shall not prevent the imposition of the penalty provided for the act committed, when the same shall constitute a more serious offense. Article 277 Abandonment of minor by person entrusted with his custody, indifference of parents, the penalty of arresto mayor and a fine not exceeding 500 pesos shall be imposed upon anyone who, having charge of the rearing or education of a minor, shall deliver said minor to a public institution or other persons, without the consent of the one who entrusted such child to his care or in the absence of the latter, without the consent of the proper authorities. The same penalty shall be imposed upon the parents who shall neglect their children by not giving them the education which their station in life require and financial conditions permit. Article 278 Exploitation of Minors the penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods and a fine not exceeding 500 pesos shall be imposed upon. 1. Any person who shall cause any boy or girl under 16 years of age to perform any dangerous feat of balancing, physical strength, or contortion. 2. Any person who, being an acrobat, gymnast, rope walker, diver, wild animal tamer or circus manager or engaged in a similar calling, shall employ in exhibitions of these kinds children under 16 years of age who are not his children or descendants. 3. Any person engaged in any of the callings enumerated in the next paragraph preceding who shall employ any descendant of his under 12 years of age in such dangerous exhibitions. 4. Any ascendant, guardian, teacher or person entrusted in any capacity with the care of a child under 16 years of age who shall deliver such child gratuitously to any person following any of the callings enumerated in paragraph 2 hereof, or to any habitual vagrant or beggar. If the delivery shall have been made in consideration of any price, compensation, or promise, the penalty shall in every case be imposed in its maximum period. In either case, the guardian or curator convicted shall also be removed from office as guardian or curator, and in the case of the parents of the child, they may be deprived temporarily or perpetually, in the discretion of the court, of their parental authority. 5. Any person who shall induce any child under 16 years of age to abandon the home of its ascendants, guardians, curators, or teachers to follow any person engaged in any of the callings mentioned in paragraph 2 hereof, or to accompany any habitual vagrant or beggar. Article 279. Additional Penalties for Other Offenses the imposition of the penalties prescribed in the preceding articles, shall not prevent the imposition upon the same person of the penalty provided for any other felonies defined and punished by this code. Section 2, Trespass to Dwelling Article 280 Qualified Trespass to Dwelling, any private person who shall enter the dwelling of another against the latter's will shall be punished by arresto mayor and a fine not exceeding 1,000 pesos. If the offense be committed by means of violence or intimidation, the penalty shall be prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods and a fine not exceeding 1,000 pesos. The provisions of this article shall not be applicable to any person who shall enter another's dwelling for the purpose of preventing some serious harm to himself, the occupants of the dwelling or a third person, nor shall it be applicable to any person who shall enter a dwelling for the purpose of rendering some service to humanity or justice nor to anyone who shall enter cafes, taverns, inn, and other public houses, while the same are open. Article 281 Other forms of trespass, the penalty of arresto menor or a fine not exceeding 200 pesos, or both, shall be imposed upon any person who shall enter the closed premises or the fenced estate of another, while either or them are uninhabited if the prohibition to enter be manifest and the trespasser has not secured the permission of the owner or the caretaker thereof. Section 3, Threats and Coercion Article 282 Grave threats, any person who shall threaten another with the infliction upon the person, 
honor or property of the latter or of his family of any wrong amounting to a crime, shall suffer. 1. The penalty next lower in degree than that prescribed by law for the crime be threatened to commit, if the offender shall have made the threat demanding money or imposing any other condition, even though not unlawful, and said offender shall have attained his purpose. If the offender shall not have attained his purpose, the penalty lower by two degrees shall be imposed. If the threat be made in writing or through a middleman, the penalty shall be imposed in its maximum period. 2. The penalty of arrest o mayor and a fine not exceeding 500 pesos, if the threat shall not have been made subject to a condition. Article 283. Light threats, any threat to commit a wrong not constituting a crime, made in the manner expressed in subdivision 1 of the next preceding article, shall be punished by arrest o mayor. Article 284. Bond for good behavior, in all cases falling within the two next preceding articles, the person making the threats may also be required to give bail not to molest the person threatened, or if he shall fail to give such bail, he shall be sentenced to destiero. Article 285. Other light threats, the penalty of arrest o menor in its minimum period or a fine not exceeding 200 pesos shall be imposed upon. 1. Any person who, without being included in the provisions of the next preceding article, shall threaten another with a weapon or draw such weapon in a quarrel, unless it be in lawful self-defense. 2. Any person who, in the heat of anger, shall orally threaten another with some harm not constituting a crime, and who by subsequent acts show that he did not persist in the idea involved in his threat provided that the circumstances of the offense shall not bring it within the provisions of Article 282 of this Code. 3. Any person who shall orally threaten to do another any harm not constituting a felony. Article 286. Grave coercions, the penalty of arrest o mayor and a fine not exceeding. 500 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, without authority of law, shall, by means of violence, prevent another from doing something not prohibited by law, or compel him to do something against his will, whether it be right or wrong. If the coercion be committed for the purpose of compelling another to perform any religious act or to prevent him from so doing, the penalty next higher in degree shall be imposed. Article 287. Light coercions, any person who, by means of violence, shall seize anything belonging to his debtor for the purpose of applying the same to the payment of the debt, shall suffer the penalty of arrest o mayor in its minimum period and a fine equivalent to the value of the thing, but in no case less than 75 pesos. Any other coercions or unjust vexations shall be punished by arrest o menor or a fine ranging from 5 pesos to 200 pesos, or both. Article 288. Other similar coercions compulsory purchase of merchandise and payment of wages by means of tokens. The penalty of arrest o mayor or a fine ranging from 200 to 500 pesos, or both, shall be imposed upon any person, agent, or officer, of any association or corporation who shall force or compel, directly or indirectly, or shall knowingly permit any laborer or employee employed by him or by such firm or corporation to be forced or compelled to purchase merchandise or commodities of any kind. The same penalties shall be imposed upon any person who shall pay the wages due a laborer or employee employed by him, by means of tokens or objects other than the legal tender currency of the laborer or employee. Article 289. Formation, maintenance and prohibition of combination of capital or labor through violence or threats. The penalty of arrest o mayor and a fine not exceeding 300 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, for the purpose of organizing, maintaining, or preventing coalitions or capital or labor, strike of laborers or lockout of employees, shall employ violence or threats in such a degree as to compel or force the laborers or employers in the free and legal exercise of their industry or work, if the act shall not constitute a more serious offense in accordance with the provisions of this code. Chapter 3, Discovery and Revelation of Secrets Article 290 Discovering secrets through seizure of correspondence, 
the penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods and a fine not exceeding 500 pesos shall be imposed upon any private individual who in order to discover the secrets of another, shall seize his papers or letters and reveal the contents thereof. If the offender shall not reveal such secrets, the penalty shall be arrest o mayor and a fine not exceeding 500 pesos. The provision shall not be applicable to parents, guardians, or persons entrusted with the custody of minors with respect to the papers or letters of the children or minors placed under their care or study, nor to spouses with respect to the papers or letters of either of them. Article 291 Revealing secrets with abuse of office, the penalty of arrest o mayor and a fine not exceeding 500 pesos shall be imposed upon any manager, employee, or servant who, in such capacity, shall learn the secrets of his principal or master and shall reveal such secrets. Article 292 Revelation of Industrial Secrets The penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods and a fine not exceeding 500 pesos shall be imposed upon the person in charge, employee, or workman of any manufacturing or industrial establishment who, to the prejudice of the owner thereof, shall reveal the secrets of the industry of the latter. Title 10 Crimes Against Property. Chapter 1 Robbery in General. Article 293. Who are guilty of robbery? Any person who, with intent to gain, shall take any personal property belonging to another, by means of violence or intimidation of any person, or using force upon anything shall be guilty of robbery. Section 1 Robbery with violence or intimidation of persons. Article 294. Robbery with violence against or intimidation of persons, penalties, any person guilty of robbery with the use of violence against or intimidation of any person shall suffer. 1. The penalty of reclusion perpetua to death, when by reason or on occasion of the robbery, the crime of homicide shall have been committed. 2. The penalty of reclusion temporal in its medium period to reclusion perpetua when the robbery shall have been accompanied by rape or intentional mutilation, or if by reason or on occasion of such robbery, any of the physical injuries penalized in subdivision 1 of Article 263 shall have been inflicted, provided, however, that when the robbery accompanied with rape is committed with a use of a deadly weapon or by two or more persons, the penalty shall be reclusion perpetua to death, as amended by PD No. 767. 3. The penalty of reclusion temporal when by reason or on occasion of the robbery, any of the physical injuries penalized in subdivision 2 of the article mentioned in the next preceding paragraph, shall have been inflicted. 4. The penalty of prison mayor in its maximum period to reclusion temporal in its medium period, if the violence or intimidation employed in the commission of the robbery shall have been carried to a degree clearly unnecessary for the commission of the crime, or when the course of its execution, the offender shall have inflicted upon any person not responsible for its commission any of the physical injuries covered by subdivisions 3 and 4 of said Article 23. 5. The penalty of prison correctional in its maximum period to prison mayor in its medium period in other cases. As amended by R.A. 18. Article 295. Robbery with physical injuries, committed in an uninhabited place and by a band or with the use of firearm on a street, road, or alley, if the offences mentioned in subdivisions 3, 4, and 5 of the next preceding article shall have been committed in an uninhabited place or by a band, or by attacking a moving train, street car, motor vehicle, or airship, or by entering the passengers' compartments in a train or, in any manner, taking the passengers thereof by surprise in the respective conveyances, or on a street, road, highway, or alley, and the intimidation is made with the use of a firearm, the offender shall be punished by the maximum period of the proper penalties. In the same cases, the penalty next higher in degree shall be imposed upon the leader of the band. Article 296 Definition of a band and penalty incurred by the members thereof, when more than three armed malefactors take part in the commission of a robbery, it shall be deemed to have been committed by a band. When any of the arms used in the commission of the offence be an unlicensed firearm, the penalty to be imposed upon all the malefactors shall be the maximum of the corresponding penalty provided by law, 
without prejudice of the criminal liability for illegal possession of such unlicensed firearms. Any member of a band who is present at the commission of a robbery by the band, shall be punished as principal of any of the assaults committed by the band, unless it be shown that he attempted to prevent the same. Article 297 Attempted and frustrated robbery committed under certain circumstances, when by reason or on occasion of an attempted or frustrated robbery a homicide is committed, the person guilty of such offences shall be punished by reclusion temporal in its maximum period to reclusion perpetua, unless the homicide committed shall deserve a higher penalty under the provisions of this code. Article 298 Execution of deeds by means of violence or intimidation, any person who, with intent to defraud another, by means of violence or intimidation, shall compel him to sign, execute, or deliver any public instrument or documents, shall be held guilty of robbery and punished by the penalties respectively prescribed in this chapter. Section 2, Robbery by the Use of Force Upon Things Article 299 Robbery in an inhabited house or public building or edifice devoted to worship, any armed person who shall commit robbery in an inhabited house or public building or edifice devoted to religious worship, shall be punished by reclusion temporal, if the value of the property taken shall exceed 250 pesos, and if a. the malefactors shall enter the house or building in which the robbery was committed, by any of the following means. 1. Through opening not intended for entrance or egress. 2. By breaking any wall, roof, or floor or breaking any door or window. 3. By using false keys, pick locks, or similar tools. 4. By using any fictitious name or pretending the exercise of public authority. Or if. b. The robbery be committed under any of the following circumstances. 1. By the breaking of doors, wardrobes, chests, or any other kind of locked or sealed furniture or receptacle. 2. By taking such furniture or objects to be broken or forced open outside the place of the robbery. When the offenders do not carry arms, and the value of the property taken exceeds 250 pesos, the penalty next lower in degree shall be imposed. The same rule shall be applied when the offenders are armed, but the value of the property taken does not exceed 250 pesos. When said offenders do not carry arms and the value of the property taken does not exceed 250 pesos, they shall suffer the penalty prescribed in the two next preceding paragraphs, in its minimum period. If the robbery be committed in one of the dependencies of an inhabited house, public building, or building dedicated to religious worship, the penalties next lower in degree than those prescribed in this article shall be imposed. Article 300 Robbery in an uninhabited place and by a band, the robbery mentioned in the next preceding article, if committed in an uninhabited place and by a band, shall be punished by the maximum period of the penalty provided therefore. Article 301 What is an inhabited house, public building, or building dedicated to religious worship and their dependencies? Inhabited house means any shelter, ship, or vessel. Constituting the dwelling of one or more persons, even though the inhabitants thereof shall temporarily be absent therefrom when the robbery is committed. All interior courts, corrals, waterhouses, granaries, barns, coach houses, stables or other departments or enclosed places contiguous to the building or edifice, having an interior entrance connected therewith, and which form part of the whole, shall be deemed dependencies of an inhabited house, public building, or building dedicated to religious worship. Orchards and other lands used for cultivation or production are not included in the terms of the next preceding paragraph, even if closed, contiguous to the building and having direct connection therewith. The term public building includes every building owned by the government or belonging to a private person not included used or rented by the government, although temporarily unoccupied by the same. Article 302 Robbery is an uninhabited place or in a private building, any robbery committed in an uninhabited place or in a building other than those mentioned in the first paragraph of Article 299, if the value of the property taken exceeds 250 pesos, shall be punished by prison correctional if any of the following circumstances is present. 1. 
If the entrance has been effected through any opening not intended for entrance or egress. 2. If any wall, roof, flower, or outside door or window has been broken. 3. If the entrance has been effected through the use of false keys, pick locks, or other similar tools. 4. If any dorm, wardrobe, chest, or by sealed or closed furniture or receptacle has been broken. 5. If any closed or sealed receptacle, as mentioned in the preceding paragraph, has been removed even if the same to broken open elsewhere. When the value of the property takes does not exceed 250 pesos, the penalty next lower in degree shall be imposed. In the cases specified in Articles 294, 295, 297, 299, 300, and 302 of this Code, when the property taken is male matter or large cattle, the offender shall suffer the penalties next higher in degree than those provided in said articles. Article 303 Robbery of cereals, fruits, or firewood in an uninhabited place or private building, in the cases enumerated in Articles 299 and 302, when the robbery consists in the taking of cereals, fruits, or firewood, the culprit shall suffer the penalty next lower in degree than that prescribed in said articles. Article 304 Possession of picklocks or similar tools, any person who shall without lawful cause have in his possession picklocks or similar tools especially adopted to the commission of the crime of robbery, shall be punished by arresto mayor in its maximum period to prison correctional in its minimum period. The same penalty shall be imposed upon any person who shall make such tools. If the offender be a locksmith, he shall suffer the penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods. Article 305 False keys, the term false keys shall be deemed to include 1. The tools mentioned in the next preceding articles. 2. Genuine keys stolen from the owner. 3. Any keys other than those intended by the owner for use in the lock forcibly opened by the offender. Chapter 2, Brigandage Article 306 Who are brigands, penalty, when more than three armed persons form a band of robbers for the purpose of committing robbery in the highway, or kidnapping persons for the purpose of extortion or to obtain ransom or for any other purpose to be attained by means of force and violence, they shall be deemed highway robbers or brigands. Persons found guilty of this offense shall be punished by prison mayor in its medium period to reclusion temporal in its minimum period if the act or acts committed by them are not punishable by higher penalties, in which case, they shall suffer such high penalties. If any of the arms carried by any of said persons be an unlicensed firearms, it shall be presumed that said persons are highway robbers or brigands, and in case of convictions the penalty shall be imposed in the maximum period. Article 307. Aiding and abetting a band of brigands, any person knowingly and in any manner aiding, abetting, or protecting a band of brigands as described in the next preceding article, or giving them information of the movements of the police or other peace officers of the government, or of the forces of the United States Army, when the latter are acting in aid of the government, or acquiring or receiving the property taken by such brigands shall be punished by prison correctional in its medium period to prison mayor in its minimum period. It shall be presumed that the person performing any of the acts provided in this article has performed them knowingly, unless the contrary is proven. Chapter 3, Theft Article 308 Who are liable for theft? Theft is committed by any person who, with intent to gain but without violence against or intimidation of persons nor force upon things, shall take personal property of another without the latter's consent. Theft is likewise committed by 1. Any person who, having found lost property, shall fail to deliver the same to the local authorities or to its owner. 2. Any person who, after having maliciously damaged the property of another, shall remove or make use of the fruits or object of the damage caused by him, and 3. Any person who shall enter an enclosed estate or a field where trespass is forbidden or which belongs to another and without the consent of its owner, shall hunt or fish upon the same or shall gather cereals, or other forest or farm products. Article 309 Penalties, 
any person guilty of theft shall be punished by 1. The penalty of prison mayor in its minimum and medium periods, if the value of the thing stolen is more than 12,000 pesos but does not exceed 22,000 pesos, but if the value of the thing stolen exceeds the latter amount the penalty shall be the maximum period of the one prescribed in this paragraph, and one year for each additional 10,000 pesos, but the total of the penalty which may be imposed shall not exceed 20 years. In such cases, and in connection with the accessory penalties which may be imposed and for the purpose of the other provisions of this code, the penalty shall be termed prison mayor or reclusion temporal, as the case may be. 2. The penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods, if the value of the thing stolen is more than 6,000 pesos but does not exceed 12,000 pesos. 3. The penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods, if the value of the property stolen is more than 200 pesos but does not exceed 6,000 pesos. 4. Arresto mayor in its medium period to prison correctional in its minimum period, if the value of the property stolen is over 50 pesos but does not exceed 200 pesos. 5. Arresto mayor to its full extent, if such value is over 5 pesos but does not exceed 50 pesos. 6. Arresto mayor in its minimum and medium periods, if such value does not exceed 5 pesos. 7. Arresto menor or a fine not exceeding 200 pesos, if the theft is committed under the circumstances enumerated in paragraph 3 of the next preceding article and the value of the thing stolen does not exceed 5 pesos. If such value exceeds said amount, the provision of any of the five preceding subdivisions shall be made applicable. 8. Arresto menor in its minimum period or a fine not exceeding 50 pesos, when the value of the thing stolen is not over 5 pesos, and the offender shall have acted under the impulse of hunger, poverty, or the difficulty of earning a livelihood for the support of himself or his family. Article 310. Qualified theft, the crime of theft shall be punished by the penalties next higher by two degrees than those respectively specified in the next preceding article, if committed by a domestic servant, or with grave abuse of confidence or if the property stolen is motor vehicle, mail matter, or large cattle or consists of coconuts taken from the premises of the plantation or fish taken from a fish pond or fishery, or if property is taken on the occasion of fire, earthquake, typhoon, volcanic eruption, or any other calamity, vehicular accident, or civil disturbance. As amended by RA 120 and BPBLG 71. May 1. 1980. Article 311. Theft of the property of the National Library and National Museum, if the property stolen be any property of the National Library or the National Museum, the penalty shall be arresto mayor or a fine ranging from 200 to 500 pesos, or both, unless a higher penalty should be provided under other provisions of this code, in which case, the offender shall be punished by such higher penalty. Chapter 4, Usurpation Article 312 Occupation of real property or usurpation of real rights in property, any person who, by means of violence against or intimidation of persons, shall take possession of any real property or shall usurp any real rights in property belonging to another, in addition to the penalty incurred for the acts of violence executed by him shall be punished by a fine from 50 to 100 percentum of the gain which he shall have obtained, but not less than 75 pesos. If the value of the gain cannot be ascertained, a fine of from 200 to 500 pesos shall be imposed. Article 313. Altering boundaries or landmarks, any person who shall alter the boundary marks or monuments of towns, provinces, or estates, or any other marks intended to designate the boundaries of the same, shall be punished by arresto menor or a fine not exceeding 100 pesos, or both. Chapter 5, Culpable Insolvency Article 314 Fraudulent insolvency, any person who shall abscond with his property to the prejudice of his creditors, shall suffer the penalty of prison mayor if he be a merchant and the penalty of prison correctional in its maximum period to prison mayor in its medium period, if he be not a merchant. Chapter 6, 
swindling and other deceits. Article 315. Swindling, estifa, any person who shall defraud another by any of the means mentioned herein below shall be punished by. First. The penalty of prison correctional in its maximum period to prison mayor in its minimum period, if the amount of the fraud is over 12,000 pesos but does not exceed 22,000 pesos, and if such amount exceeds the latter sum, the penalty provided in this paragraph shall be imposed in its maximum period, adding one year for each additional 10,000 pesos, but the total penalty which may be imposed shall not exceed 20 years. In such cases, and in connection with the accessory penalties which may be imposed. Under the provisions of this code, the penalty shall be termed prison mayor or reclusion temporal, as the case may be. Second. The penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods, if the amount of the fraud is over 6,000 pesos but does not exceed 12,000 pesos. Third. The penalty of arresto mayor in its maximum period to prison correctional in its minimum period if such amount is over 200 pesos but does not exceed 6,000 pesos, and Fourth By arresto mayor in its maximum period, if such amount does not exceed 200 pesos, provided that in the four cases mentioned, the fraud be committed by any of the following means. 1. With unfaithfulness or abuse of confidence, namely a. By altering the substance, quantity, or quality or anything of value which the offender shall deliver by virtue of an obligation to do so, even though such obligation be based on an immoral or illegal consideration. b. By misappropriating or converting, to the prejudice of another, money, goods, or any other personal property received by the offender in trust or on commission, or for administration, or under any other obligation involving the duty to make delivery of or to return the same, even though such obligation be totally or partially guaranteed by a bond, or by denying having received such money, goods, or other property. c. By taking undue advantage of the signature of the offended party in blank, and by writing any document above such signature in blank, to the prejudice of the offended party or of any third person. 2. By means of any of the following false pretenses or fraudulent acts executed prior to or simultaneously with the commission of the fraud. a. By using fictitious name, or falsely pretending to possess power, influence, qualifications, property, credit, agency, business, or imaginary transactions, or by means of other similar deceits. b. By altering the quality, fineness, or weight of anything pertaining to his art or business. c by pretending to have bribed any government employee, without prejudice to the action for calumny which the offended party may deem proper to bring against the offender. In this case, the offender shall be punished by the maximum period of the penalty. d. By post-dating a check, or issuing a check in payment of an obligation when the offender therein were not sufficient to cover the amount of the check. The failure of the drawer of the check to deposit the amount necessary to cover his check within three days from receipt of notice from the bank and or the payee or holder that said check has been dishonored for lack of insufficiency of funds shall be prima facie evidence of deceit constituting false pretense or fraudulent act. As amended by R.A. 4885, approved June 17, 1967. E by obtaining any food, refreshment, or accommodation at a hotel, inn, restaurant, boarding house, lodging house, or apartment house and the like without paying therefor, with intent to defraud the proprietor or manager thereof, or by obtaining credit at hotel, inn, restaurant, boarding house, lodging house, or apartment house by the use of any false pretense, or by abandoning or surreptitiously removing any part of his baggage from a hotel, inn, restaurant, boarding house, lodging house or apartment house after obtaining credit, food, refreshment or accommodation therein without paying for his food, refreshment or accommodation. 3. Through any of the following fraudulent means. a. By inducing another, by means of deceit, to sign any document. b. By resorting to some fraudulent practice to ensure success in a gambling game. c by removing, concealing, or destroying, in whole or in part, 
any court record, office files, document, or any other papers. Article 316. Other forms of swindling, the penalty of arrest o mayor in its minimum and medium period and a fine of not less than the value of the damage cost and not more than three times such value, shall be imposed upon. 1. Any person who, pretending to be owner of any real property, shall convey, sell, encumber or mortgage the same. 2. Any person, who, knowing that real property is encumbered, shall dispose of the same, although such encumbrance be not recorded. 3. The owner of any personal property who shall wrongfully take it from its lawful possessor, to the prejudice of the latter or any third person. 4. Any person who, to the prejudice of another, shall execute any fictitious contract. 5. Any person who shall accept any compensation given him under the belief that it was in payment of services rendered or labor performed by him, when in fact he did not actually perform such services or labor. 6. Any person who, while being a surety in a bond given in a criminal or civil action, without express authority from the court or before the cancellation of his bond or before being relieved from the obligation contracted by him, shall sell, mortgage, or, in any other manner, encumber the real property or properties with which he guaranteed the fulfillment of such obligation. Article 317. Swindling a minor, any person who taking advantage of the inexperience or emotions or feelings of a minor, to his detriment, shall induce him to assume any obligation or to give any release or execute a transfer of any property right in consideration of some loan of money, credit, or other personal property, whether the loan clearly appears in the document or is shown in any other form, shall suffer the penalty of arrest o mayor and a fine of a sum ranging from 10 to 50 per center of the value of the obligation contracted by the minor. Article 318. Other deceits the penalty of arrest o mayor and a fine of not less than the amount of the damage cost and not more than twice such amount shall be imposed upon any person who shall defraud or damage another by any other deceit not mentioned in the preceding articles of this chapter. Any person who, for profit or gain, shall interpret dreams, make forecasts, tell fortunes, or take advantage of the credulity of the public in any other similar manner, shall suffer the penalty of arrest o mayor or a fine not exceeding 200 pesos. Chapter 7, Chattel Mortgage Article 319 Removal, sale, or pledge of mortgaged property, the penalty or arrest o mayor or a fine amounting to twice the value of the property shall be imposed upon. 1. Any person who shall knowingly remove any personal property mortgaged under the chattel mortgage law to any province or city other than the one in which it was located at the time of the execution of the mortgage, without the written consent of the mortgagee, or his executors, administrators, or assigns. 2. Any mortgager who shall sell or pledge personal property already pledged, or any part thereof, under the terms of the chattel mortgage law, without the consent of the mortgagee written on the back of the mortgage and noted on the record hereof in the office of the Register of Deeds of the province where such property is located. Chapter 8, Arson and Other Crimes Involving Destructions Article 320 Destructive arson, the penalty of reclusion temporal in its maximum period to reclusion perpetua shall be imposed upon any person who shall burn. 1. Any arsenal, shipyard, storehouse, or military powder or fireworks factory, ordnance, storehouse, archives or general museum of the government. 2. Any passenger train or motor vehicle in motion or vessel out of port. 3. In an inhabited place, any storehouse, or factory of inflammable or explosive materials. Article 321. Other forms of arson, when the arson consists in the burning of other property and under the circumstances given hereunder, the offender shall be punishable. 1. By reclusion temporal or reclusion perpetua. a. If the offender shall set fire to any building, farmhouse, warehouse, hut, shelter, or vessel in port, knowing it to be occupied at the time by one or more persons. b. If the building burned is a public building and value of the damage caused exceeds 6,000 pesos. c. 
if the building burned is a public building and the purpose is to destroy evidence kept therein to be used in instituting prosecution for the punishment of violators of the law, irrespective of the amount of the damage. d. If the building burned is a public building and the purpose is to destroy evidence kept therein to be used in legislative, judicial or administrative proceedings, irrespective of the amount of the damage, provided, however, that if the evidence destroyed is to be used against the defendant for the prosecution of any crime punishable under existing laws, the penalty shall be reclusion perpetua. e. If the arson shall have been committed with the intention of collecting under an insurance policy against loss or damage by fire. 2. By reclusion temporal. a. If an inhabited house or any other building in which people are accustomed to meet is set on fire, and the culprit did not know that such house or building was occupied at the time, or if he shall set fire to a moving freight train or motor vehicle, and the value of the damage caused exceeds 6,000 pesos. b. If the value of the damage caused in paragraph, b, of the preceding subdivision does not exceed 6,000 pesos. c. If a farm, sugar mill, cane mill, mill central, bamboo groves or any similar plantation is set on fire and the damage caused exceeds 6,000 pesos, and d. If grain fields, pasture lands, or forests, or plantings are set on fire, and the damage caused exceeds 6,000 pesos. 3. By Prison Mayor. a. If the value of the damage caused in the case mentioned in paragraphs a, c, and d, in the next preceding subdivision does not exceed 6,000 pesos, b. If a building not used as a dwelling or place of assembly, located in a populated place, is set on fire, and the damage caused exceeds 6,000 pesos. 4. By prison correctional in its maximum period to prison mayor in its medium period. a. If a building used as dwelling located in an uninhabited place is set on fire and the damage caused exceeds 1,000 pesos. b. If the value or the damage caused in the case mentioned in paragraphs c and d of subdivision 2 of this article does not exceed 200 pesos. 5. By prison correctional in its medium period to prison mayor in its minimum period, when the damage caused is over 200 pesos but does not exceed 1,000 pesos, and the property referred to in paragraph a of the preceding subdivision is set on fire but when the value of such property does not exceed 200 pesos, the penalty next lower in degree than that prescribed in this subdivision shall be imposed. 6. The penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods, if the damage caused in the case mentioned in paragraph, b, of subdivision 3 of this article does not exceed 6,000 pesos but is over 200 pesos. 7. The penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods, if the damage caused in the case mentioned paragraph, b, subdivision 3 of this article does not exceed 200 pesos. 8. The penalty of arrest o mayor and a fine ranging from 50 to 100 percentum if the damage caused shall be imposed, when the property burned consists of grain fields, pasture lands, forests, or plantations when the value of such property does not exceed 200 pesos. As amended by RA 5467, approved May 12, 1969. Article 322. Cases of arson not included in the preceding articles, cases of arson not included in the next preceding articles shall be punished. 1. By arrest o mayor in its medium and maximum periods, when the damage cost does not exceed 50 pesos. 2. By arrest o mayor in its maximum period to prison correctional in its minimum period, when the damage cost is over 50 pesos but does not exceed 200 pesos. 3. By prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods, if the damage cost is over 200 pesos but does not exceed 1,000 pesos, and 4. By prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods, if it is over 1,000 pesos. Article 323. Arson of property of small value, the arson of any uninhabited hut, storehouse, barn, shed, 
or any other property the value of which does not exceed 25 pesos, committed at a time or under circumstances which clearly exclude all danger of the fire spreading, shall not be punished by the penalties respectively prescribed in this chapter, but in accordance with the damage caused and under the provisions of the following chapter. Article 324 Crimes involving destruction, any person who shall cause destruction by means of explosion, discharge of electric current, inundation, sinking or stranding of a vessel, intentional damaging of the engine of said vessel, taking up the rails from a railway track, maliciously changing railway signals for the safety of moving trains, destroying telegraph wires and telegraph posts, or those of any other system, and, in general, by using any other agency or means of destruction as effective as those above enumerated, shall be punished by reclusion temporal if the commission has endangered the safety of any person, otherwise, the penalty of prison mayor shall be imposed. Article 325 Burning one's own property as means to commit arson, any person guilty of arson or causing great destruction of the property belonging to another shall suffer the penalties prescribed in this chapter, even though he shall have set fire to or destroyed his own property for the purposes of committing the crime. Article 326 Setting fire to property exclusively owned by the offender, if the property burned shall be the exclusive property of the offender, he shall be punished by arresto mayor in its maximum period to prison correctional in its minimum period, if the arson shall have been committed for the purpose of defrauding or causing damage to another or prejudice shall actually have been caused, or if the thing burned shall have been a building in an inhabited place. Article 326a In cases where death resulted as a consequence of arson, if death resulted as a consequence of arson committed on any of the properties and under any of the circumstances mentioned in the preceding articles, the court shall impose the death penalty. Article 326b Prima facie evidence of arson any of the following circumstances shall constitute prima facie evidence of arson. 1. If after the fire, are found materials or substances soaked in gasoline, kerosene, petroleum, or other inflammables, or any mechanical, electrical chemical or traces or any of the foregoing. 2. That substantial amount of inflammable substance or materials were stored within the building not necessary in the course of the defendant's business, and 3. That the fire started simultaneously in more than one part of the building or locale under circumstances that cannot normally be due to accidental or unintentional causes, provided, however, that at least one of the following is present in any of the three above-mentioned circumstances. a. That the total insurance carried on the building and or goods is more than 80 per center of the value of such building and or goods at the time of the fire. b that the defendant after the fire has presented a fraudulent claim for loss. The penalty of prison correctional shall be imposed on one who plants the articles above mentioned, in order to secure a conviction, or as a means of extortion or coercion. As amended by RA 5467, approved May 12, 1969. Chapter 9, Malicious Mischief Article 327 who are liable for malicious mischief, any person who shall deliberately cause the property of another any damage not falling within the terms of the next preceding chapter shall be guilty of malicious mischief. Article 328 Special cases of malicious mischief, any person who shall cause damage to obstruct the performance of public functions, or using any poisonous or corrosive substance, or spreading any infection or contagion among cattle, or who cause damage to the property of the National Museum or National Library, or to any archive or registry, waterworks, road, promenade, or any other thing used in common by the public, shall be punished. 1. By prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods, if the value of the damage caused exceeds 1,000 pesos. 2. By arresto mayor, if such value does not exceed the above-mentioned amount but it is over 200 pesos, and 3. By arresto minor, in such value does not exceed 200 pesos. Article 329. Other mischiefs, the mischiefs not included in the next preceding article shall be punished. 1. 
By arresto mayor in its medium and maximum periods, if the value of the damage cost exceeds 1,000 pesos. 2. By arresto mayor in its minimum and medium periods, if such value is over 200 pesos but does not exceed 1,000 pesos, and 3. By arresto menor or fine of not less than the value of the damage cost and not more than 200 pesos, if the amount involved does not exceed 200 pesos or cannot be estimated. Article 330. Damage and obstruction to means of communication, the penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods shall be imposed upon any person who shall damage any railway, telegraph, or telephone lines. If the damage shall result in any derailment of cars, collision, or other accident, the penalty of prison mayor shall be imposed, without prejudice to the criminal liability of the offender for the other consequences of his criminal act. For the purpose of the provisions of the article, the electric wires, traction cables, signal system and other things pertaining to railways, shall be deemed to constitute an integral part of a railway system. Article 331. Destroying or damaging statues, public monuments, or paintings, any person who shall destroy or damage statues or any other useful or ornamental public monument shall suffer the penalty of arresto mayor in its medium period to prison correctional in its minimum period. Any person who shall destroy or damage any useful or ornamental painting of a public nature shall suffer the penalty of arresto menor or a fine not exceeding 200 pesos, or both such fine and imprisonment, in the discretion of the court. Chapter 10 Exemption from Criminal Liability in Crimes Against Property Article 332 Persons exempt from criminal liability, no criminal, but only civil liability, shall result from the commission of the crime of theft, swindling or malicious mischief committed or caused mutually by the following persons. 1. Spouses, ascendants, and descendants, or relatives by affinity in the same line. 2. The widowed spouse with respect to the property which belonged to the deceased spouse before the same shall have passed into the possession of another, and 3. Brothers and sisters and brothers-in-law and sisters-in-law if living together. The exemption established by this article shall not be applicable to strangers participating in the commission of the crime. Title 11, Crimes Against Chastity Chapter 1, Adultery and Concubinage Article 333 Who are guilty of adultery? Adultery is committed by any married woman who shall have sexual intercourse with a man not her husband and by the man who has carnal knowledge of her knowing her to be married even if the marriage be subsequently declared void. Adultery shall be punished by prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods. If the person guilty of adultery committed this offense while being abandoned without justification by the offended spouse, the penalty next lower in degree than that provided in the next preceding paragraph shall be imposed. Article 334 Concubinage, any husband who shall keep a mistress in the conjugal dwelling, or shall have sexual intercourse, under scandalous circumstances, with a woman who is not his wife, or shall cohabit with her in any other place, shall be punished by prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods. The concubine shall suffer the penalty of destiero. Chapter 2, Rape and Acts of Lasciviousness Article 335 When and how rape is committed Rape is committed by having carnal knowledge of a woman under any of the following circumstances. 1. By using force or intimidation. 2. When the woman is deprived of reason or otherwise unconscious, and 3. When the woman is under 12 years of age, even though neither of the circumstances mentioned in the two next preceding paragraphs shall be present. The crime of rape shall be punished by reclusion perpetua. Whenever the crime of rape is committed with the use of a deadly weapon or by two or more persons, the penalty shall be reclusion perpetua to death. When by reason or on the occasion of the rape, the victim has become insane, the penalty shall be death. When rape is attempted or frustrated and a homicide is committed by reason or on the occasion thereof, the penalty shall be likewise death. When by reason or on the occasion of the rape, a homicide is committed, the penalty shall be death. 
as amended by RA 2632, approved June 18, 1960, and RA 4111, approved June 20, 1964. Article 336. Acts of lasciviousness, any person who shall commit any act of lasciviousness upon other persons of either sex, under any of the circumstances mentioned in the preceding article, shall be punished by prison correctional. Chapter 3, Seduction, Corruption of Minors and White Slave Trade Article 337 Qualified Seduction, the seduction of a virgin over 12 years and under 18 years of age, committed by any person in public authority, priest, home servant, domestic, guardian, teacher, or any person who, in any capacity, shall be entrusted with the education or custody of the woman seduced, shall be punished by prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods. The penalty next higher in degree shall be imposed upon any person who shall seduce his sister or descendant, whether or not she be a virgin or over 18 years of age. Under the provisions of this chapter, seduction is committed when the offender has carnal knowledge of any of the persons and under the circumstances described herein. Article 338 Simple seduction, the seduction of a woman who is single or a widow of good reputation, over 12 but under 18 years of age, committed by means of deceit, shall be punished by arresto mayor. Article 339 Acts of lasciviousness with the consent of the offended party, the penalty of arresto mayor shall be imposed to punish any other acts of lasciviousness committed by the same persons and the same circumstances as those provided in Articles 337 and 338. Article 340 Corruption of Minors any person who shall promote or facilitate the prostitution or corruption of persons underage to satisfy the lust of another, shall be punished by prison mayor, and if the culprit is a pubic officer or employee, including those, in government-owned or controlled corporations, he shall also suffer the penalty of temporary absolute disqualification. As amended by Batas Pambanza BLG 92. Article 341. White Slave Trade the penalty of prison mayor in its medium and maximum period shall be imposed upon any person who, in any manner, or under any pretext, shall engage in the business or shall profit by prostitution or shall enlist the services of any other for the purpose of prostitution, as amended by Batas Pambanza BLG 186. Chapter 4, Abduction Article 342 Forcible Abduction the abduction of any woman against her will and with lewd designs shall be punished by reclusion temporal. The same penalty shall be imposed in every case, if the female abducted be under 12 years of age. Article 343 Consented abduction, the abduction of a virgin over 12 years and under 18 years of age, carried out with her consent and with lewd designs, shall be punished by the penalty of prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods. Chapter 5, Provisions Relative to the Preceding Chapters of Title 11 Article 344 Prosecution of the Crimes of Adultery, Concubinage, Seduction, Abduction, Rape, and Acts of Lasciviousness, the crimes of adultery and concubinage shall not be prosecuted except upon a complaint filed by the offended spouse. The offended party cannot institute criminal prosecution without including both the guilty parties, if they are both alive nor, in any case, if he shall have consented or pardoned the offenders. The offenses of seduction, abduction, rape, or acts of lasciviousness, shall not be prosecuted except upon a complaint filed by the offended party or her parents, grandparents, or guardian, nor, in any case, if the offender has been expressly pardoned by the above-named persons, as the case may be. In cases of seduction, abduction, acts of lasciviousness and rape, the marriage of the offender with the offended party shall extinguish the criminal action or remit the penalty already imposed upon him. The provisions of this paragraph shall also be applicable to the CO principles, accomplices and accessories after the fact of the above-mentioned crimes. Article 345 Civil liability of persons guilty of crimes against chastity, person guilty of rape, seduction, or abduction, shall also be sentenced. One. To indemnify the offended woman. 
2. To acknowledge the offspring, unless the law should prevent him from so doing. 3. In every case to support the offspring. The adulterer and the concubine in the case provided for in Articles 333 and 334 may also be sentenced, in the same proceeding or in a separate civil proceeding, to indemnify for damages caused to the offended spouse. Article 346 Liability of ascendants, guardians, teachers, or other persons entrusted with the custody of the offended party, the ascendants, guardians, curators, teachers, and any person who, by abuse of authority or confidential relationships, shall cooperate as accomplices in the perpetration of the crimes embraced in chapters, second, third and fourth, of this title, shall be punished as principals. Teachers or other persons in any other capacity entrusted with the education and guidance of youth, shall also suffer the penalty of temporary special disqualification in its maximum period to perpetual special disqualification. Any person falling within the terms of this article, and any other person guilty of corruption of minors for the benefit of another, shall be punished by special disqualification from filling the office of guardian. Title 12 Crimes Against the Civil Status of Persons Chapter 1, Simulation of Births and Usurpation of Civil Status Article 347 Simulation of Births, Substitution of One Child for Another and Concealment or Abandonment of a Legitimate Child, the simulation of births and the substitution of one child for another shall be punished by prison mayor and a fine of not exceeding 1,000 pesos. The same penalties shall be imposed upon any person who shall conceal or abandon any legitimate child with intent to cause such child to lose its civil status. Any physician or surgeon or public officer who, in violation of the duties of his profession or office, shall cooperate in the execution of any of the crimes mentioned in the two next preceding paragraphs, shall suffer the penalties therein prescribed and also the penalty of temporary special disqualification. Article 348. Usurpation of civil status, the penalty of prison mayor shall be imposed upon any person who shall usurp the civil status of another, should he do so for the purpose of defrauding the offended part or his heirs, otherwise, the penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods shall be imposed. Chapter 2, Illegal Marriages. Article 349. Bigamy. The penalty of prison mayor shall be imposed upon any person who shall contract a second or subsequent marriage before the former marriage has been legally dissolved, or before the absent spouse has been declared presumptively dead by means of a judgment rendered in the proper proceedings. Article 350. Marriage contracted against provisions of laws, the penalty of prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods shall be imposed upon any person who, without being included in the provisions of the next preceding article, shall have not been complied with or that the marriage is in disregard of a legal impediment. If either of the contracting parties shall obtain the consent of the other by means of violence, intimidation, or fraud, he shall be punished by the maximum period of the penalty provided in the next preceding paragraph. Article 351. Premature Marriages any widow who shall marry within 301 day from the date of the death of her husband, or before having delivered if she shall have been pregnant at the time of his death, shall be punished by arresto mayor and a fine not exceeding 500 pesos. The same penalties shall be imposed upon any woman whose marriage shall have been annulled or dissolved, if she shall marry before her delivery or before the expiration of the period of 301 day after the legal separation. Article 352 Performance of a legal marriage ceremony, priests or ministers of any religious denomination or sect, or civil authorities who shall perform or authorize any illegal marriage ceremony shall be punished in accordance with the provisions of the marriage law. Title 13, Crimes Against Honor Chapter 1, Libel Section 1, Definitions, Forms, and Punishment of this Crime Article 353 Definition of libel, a libel is public and malicious imputation of a crime, or of a vice or defect, real or imaginary, or any act, omission, condition, status, or circumstance tending to cause the dishonor, discredit, or contempt of a natural or juridical person, or to blacken the memory of one who is dead. Article 354 
Requirement for publicity, every defamatory imputation is presumed to be malicious, even if it be true, if no good intention and justifiable motive for making it is shown, except in the following cases. 1. A private communication made by any person to another in the performance of any legal, moral, or social duty, and 2. A fair and true report, made in good faith, without any comments or remarks, of any judicial, legislative, or other official proceedings which are not of confidential nature, or of any statement, report, or speech delivered in said proceedings, or of any other act performed by public officers in the exercise of their functions. Article 355. Libel means by writings or similar means, a libel committed by means of writing, printing, lithography, engraving, radio, phonograph, painting, theatrical exhibition, cinematographic exhibition, or any similar means, shall be punished by prison correctional in its minimum and medium periods or a fine ranging from 200 to 6,000 pesos, or both, in addition to the civil action which may be brought by the offended party. Article 356. Threatening to publish an offer to present such publication for a compensation, the penalty of arrest o mayor or a fine from 200 to 2,000 pesos, or both, shall be imposed upon any person who threatens another to publish a libel concerning him or the parents, spouse, child, or other members of the family of the latter or upon anyone who shall offer to prevent the publication of such libel for a compensation or money consideration. Article 357. Prohibited publication of acts referred to in the course of official proceedings. The penalty of arrest o mayor or a fine of from 20 to 2,000 pesos, or both, shall be imposed upon any reporter, editor, or manager or a newspaper, daily or magazine, who shall publish facts connected with the private life of another and offensive to the honor, virtue, and reputation of said person, even though said publication be made in connection with or under the pretext that it is necessary in the narration of any judicial or administrative proceedings wherein such facts have been mentioned. Article 358. Slander, oral defamation shall be punished by arrest o mayor in its maximum period to prison correctional in its minimum period if it is of a serious and insulting nature, otherwise the penalty shall be arrest o menor or a fine not exceeding 200 pesos. Article 359. Slander by deed, the penalty of arrest o mayor in its maximum period to prison correctional in its minimum period or a fine ranging from 200 to 1,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who shall perform any act not included and punished in this title, which shall cast dishonor, discredit or contempt upon another person. If said act is not of a serious nature, the penalty shall be arrest o menor or a fine not exceeding 200 pesos. Section 2, General Provisions Article 360 Persons responsible, any person who shall publish, exhibit, or cause the publication or exhibition of any defamation in writing or by similar means, shall be responsible for the same. The author or editor of a book or pamphlet, or the editor or business manager of a daily newspaper, magazine, or serial publication, shall be responsible for the defamations contained therein to the same extent as if he were the author thereof. The criminal and civil action for damages in cases of written defamations as provided for in this chapter, shall be filed simultaneously or separately with the court of first instance of the province or city where the libelous article is printed and first published or where any of the offended parties actually resides at the time of the commission of the offense, provided, however, that where one of the offended parties is a public officer whose office is in the city of Manila at the time of the commission of the offense, the action shall be filed in the court of first instance of the city of Manila, or of the city or province where the libelous article is printed and first published, and in case such public officer does not hold office in the city of Manila, the action shall be filed in the court of first instance of the province or city where he held office at the time of the commission of the offense or where the libelous article is printed and first published and in case one of the offended parties is a private individual, the action shall be filed in the court of first instance of the province or city where he actually resides at the time of the commission of the offense or where the libelous matter is printed and first published, provided. Further, that the civil Action shall be filed in the same court where the criminal action is filed and vice versa, provided, furthermore, 
that the court where the criminal action or civil action for damages is first filed, shall acquire jurisdiction to the exclusion of other courts, and, provided, finally, that this amendment shall not apply to cases of written defamations, the civil and or criminal actions which have been filed in court at the time of the effectivity of this law. Preliminary investigation of criminal action for written defamations as provided for in the chapter shall be conducted by the provincial or city fiscal of the province or city, or by the municipal court of the city or capital of the province where such action may be instituted in accordance with the provisions of this article. No criminal action for defamation which consists in the imputation of a crime which cannot be prosecuted de officio shall be brought except at the instance of and upon complaint expressly filed by the offended party. As amended by RA 1289, approved June 15, 1955, RA 4363, approved June 19, 1965. Article 361. Proof of the truth, in every criminal prosecution for libel, the truth may be given in evidence to the court and if it appears that the matter charged as libelous is true, and, moreover, that it was published with good motives and for justifiable ends, the defendants shall be acquitted. Proof of the truth of an imputation of an act or omission not constituting a crime shall not be admitted, unless the imputation shall have been made against government employees with respect to facts related to the discharge of their official duties. In such cases if the defendant proves the truth of the imputation made by him, he shall be acquitted. Article 362 Libelous remarks, libelous remarks or comments connected with the matter privileged under the provisions of Article 354, if made with malice, shall not exempt the author thereof nor the editor or managing editor of a newspaper from criminal liability. Chapter 2, Incriminatory Machinations Article 363 Incriminating innocent person, any person who, by any act not constituting perjury, shall directly incriminate or impute to an innocent person the commission of a crime, shall be punished by arrest o minor. Article 364 Intriguing against honor, the penalty of arrest o minor or fine not exceeding. 200 pesos shall be imposed for any intrigue which has for its principal purpose to blemish the honor or reputation of a person. Title 14, Quasi-Offenses Sole Chapter, Criminal Negligence Article 365. Imprudence and negligence, any person who, by reckless imprudence, shall commit any act which, had it been intentional, would constitute a grave felony, shall suffer the penalty of arrest o mayor in its maximum period to prison correctional in its medium period, if it would have constituted a less grave felony, the penalty of arrest o mayor in its minimum and medium periods shall be imposed, if it would have constituted a light felony. The penalty of arrest o minor in its maximum period shall be imposed. Any person who, by simple imprudence or negligence, shall commit an act which would otherwise constitute a grave felony, shall suffer the penalty of arrest o mayor in its medium and maximum periods, if it would have constituted a less serious felony, the penalty of arrest o mayor in its minimum period shall be imposed. When the execution of the act covered by this article shall have only resulted in damage to the property of another, the offender shall be punished by a fine ranging from an amount equal to the value of said damages to three times such value, but which shall in no case be less than 25 pesos. A fine not exceeding 200 pesos and censure shall be imposed upon any person who, by simple imprudence or negligence, shall cause some wrong which, if done maliciously, would have constituted a light felony. In the imposition of these penalties, the court shall exercise their sound discretion, without regard to the rules prescribed in Article 64. The provisions contained in this article shall not be applicable. 1. When the penalty provided for the offense is equal to or lower than those provided in the first two paragraphs of this article, in which case the court shall impose the penalty next lower in degree than that which should be imposed in the period which they may deem proper to apply. 2. When, by imprudence or negligence and with violation of the automobile law, to death of a person shall be caused, in which case the defendant shall be punished by prison correctional in its medium and maximum periods. Reckless imprudence consists in voluntary, but without malice, 
doing or falling to do an act from which material damage results by reason of inexcusable lack of precaution on the part of the person performing of failing to perform such act, taking into consideration his employment or occupation, degree of intelligence, physical condition and other circumstances regarding persons, time and place. Simple imprudence consists in the lack of precaution displayed in those cases in which the damage impending to be caused is not immediate nor the danger clearly manifest. The penalty next higher in degree to those provided for in this article shall be imposed upon the offender who fails to lend on the spot to the injured parties such help as may be in this hand to give. As amended by RA 1790, approved June 21, 1957. Title 15 Final Provisions Article 366 Application of laws enacted prior to this Code, without prejudice to the provisions contained in Article 22 of this Code, felonies and misdemeanors, committed prior to the date of effectiveness of this Code shall be punished in accordance with the Code or acts in force at the time of their commission. Article 367 Repealing Clause, except as is provided in the next preceding article, the present penal code, the provisional law for the application of its provisions, and Acts NOS 277, 282, 480, 518, 519, 899, 1121, 1438, 1523, 1559, 1692, 1754, 1955, 1773, 2020, 2036, 2071, 2142, 2212, 2293, 2298, 2300, 2364, 2549, 2557, 2595, 2609, 2718, 3103, 3195, 3244, 3298, 3309, 3313, 3397, 3,559, and 3,586, are hereby repealed. The provisions of the Acts which are mentioned hereunder are also repealed, namely, Act 666, Section 6 and 18, Act 1508, Sections 9, 10, 11, and 12, Act 1524, Sections 1, 2, and 6. Act 1697, Sections 3 and 4. Act 1757, Sections 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1st Clause, 11, and 12. Act 2381, Sections 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, and 9. Act 2711, Sections 100 and 2. 2670, 2671, and 2672. Act 3247, Sections 1, 2, 3, and 5, and General Order, No. 58, Series of 1900, Section 106. End of the Revised Penal Code Act No. 3815. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for more audiobooks like this.